Matters. Family Matters. That was one of my favorite TV shows growing up. Family Matters. Yeah, family matter. Oh, Steve Urkel. Steve Urkel had to switch it up, too. He turned into, uh, what's Stefan? <laughs> and all the girls started going crazy. I'm like, that's the same dude. Yeah, he just took the glasses off. He had a little swagger. Yeah, he got a little swagger. Now you like. You like him. Nah, you still like Steve. <laughs> but, but, but I want y'all to get this. I, I'm all off topic. But, but you know, that's how some people are. They can't see past a person's potential. They can't see past a person's potential. And sometimes God gives you a Steve Urkel. But you can't see past that Steve Urkel to get to that to Steve get to Urkel. That Steve Urkel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who that's for. That might be for a single woman. You're looking at somebody, you're like, he ain't all that. Yeah, he just need a little flavor. He just need a, a little personality. You got to drop some, some yeah. salt on him. Yes. Give him some flavor. Some of the and, millennials don't know about family matters. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. They like, who? Steve Urkel. Look it up. It's go on the, the it's on the History Channel. It's on, <laughs> it's on the History Channel. You Check go on YouTube. Nah. Y'all can find him. <laughs> yeah. Just put in Steve Urkel. Yeah. Y'all will find him. They're like, who is Steve Urkel? What? We're talking about. Oh, Stefan. Stefan. Okay. Thank okay. <laughs> Stefan Urkel. Yeah. Thank you. She probably was one of the ones that liked him. <laughs> you got to get his name right, Pastor. <laughs> Stefan. It's Stefan. That's <laughs> Stefan Urkel. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, um, don't overlook people's potential because they have the potential to become something better. Yes. And sometimes you might be despising what God may have destined for you mm. because it's not looking like what you think it needs to look like. My Lord. But with the spirit of God and with God moving in and through that man or that woman of God's life, he or she can be just what you're looking for. Mm. That's Stefan. Arkell. Yes. Amen. Come on, put All your right. hands together. Let's bless the Lord. Y'all yeah. ready for the word? If we can stand for the reading of God's word, we want to prepare our heart and mind. Yeah. Let's get ready to eat. We're going to be going to the book of Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to skip a little bit, and then we're going to read uh, Ephesians 6, uh, but we're going to all put it together, so we want you to get comfortable well not too comfortable but settle your spirit settle your heart so that you can receive amen amen so we're going to jaywalk to the book of ephesians chapter 5 verse 21 and we're reading it from the living bible amen ephesians chapter 5 verse 21 and it reads as this honor christ by submitting to each other you wives must submit to your husbands leadership in the same way you submit to the Lord verse 25 and your hu and you husbands show the same kind of love to your wives as Christ showed to the church when he died for her Ephesians 6 and 1 children obey your parents this is the right thing to do because God has placed them in authority over you and verse 4 says, and now a word to the parents. Don't keep on scolding and nagging your children, making them angry and resentful. Rather, bring them up with the loving discipline the Lord himself approves with suggestions and godly advice. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you. Thank you for this time that you have given us to share together. Thank yes. you, Lord, for the time that you have uh, allowed us to worship you and to praise you and father god we come before you just saying thank you for the word that's about to come forth i pray lord god that it will go out and accomplish that which it was sent to do father i also pray lord god that as we hear your word that faith our faith will begin to increase yes. because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god father god i pray that as pastors you'll think through our mind pray that you'll speak through our mouth none of us all of you and we pray these things in Jesus name and the church said 
Amen. And amen. You all may be seated. Family matters. Here in the book of Ephesians, we can see where the Apostle Paul is writing to the church of Ephesus. He's writing to the church of Ephesus, letting them know that they need to submit one to another as families. He began to let the husbands know that the wives should submit to the husband and they should submit to the husband's leadership as well as the husband should submit to the wife because at the end of the day, both of them, of them are under the banner of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul begins to write a beautiful picture or describe a beautiful picture between the harmony that a husband should have with the wife and the wife with the with the husband. And he begins to engraft the children in there as well by saying that the children should obey their parents. That is right in the Lord. I believe the Apostle Paul was just trying to clue the church of Ephesus in to let them know that if they want to be a healthy family, yes. if they want to be a growing family, if they want to be a thriving family, the family has to submit one to another under the mission of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So our goal today is to encourage you to become healthy as families. We all came together dressed alike. Y'all looking good. Yeah. All the families are matching. But we want that unity not to be just on the outside, but something that is on the inside as well. Something that is harmonious in your households. So we're talking about the health of the family, the unity of the household. And in order to have a healthy family, we got to know this. What we feed or sow into our families will determine the health of our families. So whatever we're putting in is what we're going to get out. If we're sowing into our children anger and bitterness, that's what they're going to give back to us. If we're sowing into our husband uh, all kinds of things and rage and confusion and problems, then that's what's going to come out of our spouse. We got to understand that whatever we put in, that sowing and reaping principle, it works through all of life. So whatsoever a man sows, that's what he's going mm -hmm. to reap. So if you want your family to be successful, if you want your family to be on the up and up, if you want your family to be thriving and flourishing, you got to be putting the right things in there. What are the right things? I'm glad you asked. We're going to talk about that today. So make sure your families are taking notes. Listen intently because we want your families to be healthy, growing, and successful. Amen. When I begin to think about what we feed our family, one of the things that come to mind is uh, how I've been uh, positioning myself to uh, ingest uh, better things. Um, I've been working out for the last, I believe, uh, eight months. I've been working out for the last eight months trying to uh, become my best version of myself. Uh, one of the things I did was I went out and I hired uh, a personal trainer and I hired a personal trainer because I wanted to allow or have someone that can push me beyond my limits yes. or my limitations. But one of the things uh, my trainer began to say is he said that you can't exercise your diet. He said you can't exercise your diet. Literally he was saying that uh, you can exercise all you want but if you put the wrong food in your body yes. you're not going to get the outcome that you're looking for. Yes. And literally in the natural I can see where it works spiritually as uh, the f with the family dynamic that we have to make sure that we are putting the right things in our family relationships and yes. our family dynamic yes. if we want to get the right results that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants a thriving family. Everyone wants a loving family. Yeah. But can I say your family will be only as good as the things that you put in it. Mm -hmm. So can I encourage each and every one of you all to make sure that you're feeding your family the proper things so that you can so that it can be all that God called it to be. Amen. Let's look at Galatians uh, chapter six, verse seven. It reads, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever one sows that will he also reap for one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal 
life. And let us not grow weary in doing good, mm -hmm. for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are in the household of faith. So here in this scripture, it's so full. It lets us know that, first of all, if we want to get good things out of our families or out of our life, mm -hmm. we got to be sowing in the right things. We got to sow spiritual things. I'm all about legacy when it comes to my family. I don't care about what they're wearing on the outside as long as I know that I've taught them how to pray. If I've taught them the word of God, if I've taught them character and integrity, those are the things that are going to last. And as families, as leaders of families, mothers and fathers, we got to understand it's not about giving them the latest fashions or giving them the latest things because those things are temporary things. What we should be focusing on is putting something on the heart of our children that will be everlasting, yeah. a prayer life, a life that is full of the word of God, yeah. a life that yeah. is character built, yeah. a life that is full of the spirit because all the rest of that stuff it's going to go away when they leave your house as adults you got to know that they're going to stand on the word of God because you're not going to be there with them so what we put into them as children will sustain sustain them in their adulthood amen come on let's give God some praise and you can write this down as it relates to your children and your family it's not what you put on them it's what you put in them yeah yeah it's not what you put on them it's what you put in them. Yes, it's good to uh, give them the latest shoes. Yes, it's good for them to wear their J's or their latest trend. But truth be told, it's not what you put on your kids or on your family that matters. Yeah. It's what you put in them yeah. because that's what's going to last. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I never seen Michael Jordan come to bail a son or a daughter out of prison. No, 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 no. But I have seen God come and invade a person's life and change their life like yeah. never before yeah. and call them out of darkness yeah. into his marvelous life. Yeah. So it's not what we put on our kids or on our family that matters. It's what we put in them. Yes. So my question is, is your family on a balanced diet? Yeah, yeah, we got some nutritionists uh, in the building. We got some people that uh, understand the importance of eating right mm -hmm. and uh, operating with a proper diet. Yeah. Because if you want to be your best, you got to make sure you put those best things on the inside of you. Yeah. If you want to operate optimally as a man or a woman of God in the natural, mm -hmm. you can't have a diet of hot dogs, chicken nuggets, mm -hmm. and french fries. French fries, French fries, French fries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 it's not, the hot dogs won't fuel you like you need to be fueled. The chicken nuggets won't fuel you like you need to be fueled. Those French fries, although they taste good, and especially them McDonald's fries, Lord have mercy. Pray for me, pray for me. Yeah. Those French fries, they won't fuel you like you need to be fueled. Sometimes you have to have a lean steak. Sometimes you have to eat some broccoli. Yeah. Sometimes you have to have fruit as a part of your diet. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to drink some water. Mm -hmm. I know y'all don't like water. Some of y'all ain't drunk water for 10 years. <laughs> but some of y'all, y'all need some water to fuel. To, yeah, kidneys crying, hurting. <laughs> but some of y'all, y'all need that water to purify you and get some of those toxic uh, things that's on the inside of you. Yeah. So my thought is... A balanced diet is necessary mm -hmm. just as in the natural if you want to be your best. Yeah. Spiritually for your family dynamic, if you want your family to be bit at their best, they have to be on a balanced diet as well. Amen. 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 So let's look at this balanced diet in the natural sense. Uh, when we see anybody ever seen this my plate uh, health uh, diagram where there's your fruits and vegetables it tells you your amount of proteins your grains and the dairy that's necessary to have a healthy balanced meal when you look at the my plate it tells us that you know we got to have those vegetables we got to have those fruits those proteins and those grains those healthy grains are necessary so not all bread is bad so you know you just have to know what the correct portions is and then you include the dairy so the balanced family let's talk about how it relates to us in the spirit the balanced family has to start with some protein 
Yeah. Somebody say protein. Protein. That strong meat. Yeah. Strong meat. And when we're talking about the strong meat, we're talking about the strong meat of the word, which can be found in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 through 14. It says, for when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that someone teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, yeah. even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both what is good and evil. So we're talking about that strong meat, that good steak, that T-bone, that ribeye, that chateaubriand of the word, where yeah. you can cut that word up, digest it, and be able to chew it down, and it is stabilizing your soul. Sometimes we get into a place where we're used to just having uh, hot dogs, that little fast food, but our body needs the strong meat of the word. Yeah. Somebody in our household has to be on that strong meat. We have to be able to chew the word, digest the word, and then present it to our families. But if everybody on milk, all us babies in the house, that means we going off on each other. Nobody's want to settle down. Somebody yeah. crying over here. Somebody pooping over there. Somebody doing this, that, and the third because we all babes. But God wants somebody, anybody, to be on that. Strong me. Amen. Amen. Any meat eaters out here? Yeah, yeah. I need some strong meat. It's nothing like a bone in ribeye. Yeah, yeah a good ribeye. Yeah. <laughs> I even like longhorns. Yeah. And I eat the ribeye and I eat it down to the bone. I start sucking that bone. I start, I start getting the salt and the pepper up off that bone because <laughs> I, I like the flavor of the meat. And truth be told, if you want to be a believer that's strong in the things of God, you have to be on the strong word of God. Uh, every believer, they want to do great exploits and they want to be their best. But the only way that you can be your best is to be on this thing called strong meat. And notice, and I want you to uh, look at this because I don't want to go past it. So because I want you to see what the Apostle Paul is trying to convey to the church. He's saying literally by now you ought to be teachers. Mm. But you have need that someone for someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as need of milk and not of strong what? Meat. For everyone who uses what? Milk. milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Yeah. For he is a babe. I want to pause right here because the apostle Paul is writing to the church. Letting them know that by now you ought to be teachers. Yeah. In other words, by now you should be teaching somebody else. Yeah. But because you're not teaching someone else, you now need to go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. You got to learn the first oracles of the things of God. Yeah. Because he's saying uh, you should be grown right now, mm -hmm. but you haven't grown up. In other words, they were a church, they were a church and they were loving God and they were trying to serve God, but they weren't trying to grow in the things of God. Yeah. And sometimes as believers, we know people that love God and they try to serve God, but we know that they aren't necessarily growing in the things of God. Yeah. And the Apostle Paul says the person that's not growing in the things of God, they're not on strong meat, they're on this thing called milk. And we all know that as a grown man, if you drink milk, it's not going to give you everything that you need in your body. Yeah. Milk is only for the babies. Yeah. If you got a baby on your breast, if you got a, a baby that you're, you're grooming and growing up, the milk is good for that baby. Why? Because that milk can get that baby just what they need. But if you got a strong man, I don't need the milk. I need some meat, y'all. I need a steak. I need some shots I bring on. I need a ribeye. I need a T-bone. I need something that's going to cause my, my teeth to work. 
And, and the apostle Paul is letting us know that as a believer, you got to grow up to a certain point to where you don't want the milk anymore. You want some meat. Do we got some believers in here that need some meat? Yeah, yeah, I don't know about y'all. I, I can eat the beans. I can eat this, that, and other, but I need some meat sometimes. I need something to remind me that I'm still a grown man. And that's what the Paul, Apostle Paul said. We are in need of strong meat yeah. because milk is for those that are unskillful in the word of God. Amen. So somebody in the household, if not everybody, needs to be able to process strong meat. So in your family dynamic, you have to sit and look who is in the house that's going to be serving up this strong meat. If not everybody, if all of y'all can't be on strong meat, let's develop enough so someone can be able to eat the word of God and distribute it to the household or to the family. And just like you take those babies, you know, when your baby was small and they want to try to eat some meat off your plate, you chew it up a little bit. Yeah. That's nasty. <laughs> <Chew> <laughs> That what grandma did though. Yeah, yeah. I ain't eat no meat from yeah. my grandma mouth. Yeah. <laughs> you a grandma baby. Yeah. When they chew that meat. I was a titty baby too. Oh, oh no, okay. That. My bad. Yeah. I was on that milk. <laughs> oh. Somebody got some oil. Lord. <laughs> Need to be real I missed going. you. I missed you up here. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Yeah. I got I to be his buffer again. Yeah. <laughs> Keep on the straight and narrow. But the meat, when you take that meat, when you're yeah. as a baby, your mom would take that meat, try mm -hmm. to get you to taste some of it, and they put it in your mouth so yeah. that you can break it down some. Yeah. If you're the leader in your household, Take that word, That's bring good. it down so your, your children can be able to taste some of that meat so that they can begin to grow up, mature in the things of God so that they can take some meat as they grow and mature. How does that work? We got to keep giving them the word. We got to keep distributing that word, yeah. chopping it up for them. Yeah. Son, let me tell you about the grace of God. Let me tell you about the, the uh, laws and how we are no longer under the law, but we are under God's grace. Let me tell you about yeah, salvation that's real. in Jesus. That's real. Let me give you the principal things and giving them that word so that they can stand on their two feet and not have to go back to that milk. The milk is when you don't understand that you are the righteousness of God. Come on, that's what the and word so says. When you're Tossing to and fro by every wind of doctrine, that means that you're on milk. So that means you can't digest the solid food that God is trying to produce in your life. And so we got to give those basics to our children. We got to give those basics to our family so that they can stand on the word of God and not be shaken and shifting. So somebody, anybody needs to be on that strong meat. Is anybody going to be on that strong meat? Amen. I'm going to eat me some meat. Amen. Amen. So the second part of the balanced family, you got to have your vegetables, yeah. your vegetables, <laughs> your vegetables. It needs to be able to process. Excuse me. It needs to be. There we go. The vegetables, green flourishing. Uh, you have to have those things that are uh, going to give you those nutrients, those yeah. things that are necessary so that you can be your best. Mm -hmm. uh, the vegetables aren't necessarily the greatest thing that most people like to eat, but it is a necessary component yeah. in the growth of any human being. Um, I remember many times my, my grandmother, she would uh, fix my plate of food. Uh, she would give me some meat. Didn't have no problem with the meat because I could eat meat with the best of them. But she would put those peas on my table, those green peas. I had a problem with the green peas. I don't know about y'all. Uh, I can eat collard greens. I can eat string beans, string beans. But them peas, they, uh, ain't that. They mushy. They fat and uh, uh. But my grandma would put those peas on my plate. Not because I liked them, but because she knew that they would be good 
for me. And sometimes as a believer, we got to understand that the word of God and praise and worship Mm -hmm. and saturating my family in the things of God and saturating them in prayer and training them up in the principles and the oracles of God might not be something that they like, Mm. but I'm going to give it to them because I know it's going to be good for them. And this is where being a strong man of God and a strong woman of God and creating an atmosphere in your house for your children Mm. to where you can begin to cultivate God's spirit in your house. And, And as a believer, You can't run away from the vegetables Mm -mm. because those vegetables are going to give you what you need to help you become the best person that you need to be. So your wife can be the best woman of God that she need to be, that your children can be the best that they can be. But you just can't forego giving it to them just to keep them happy. Mm. No, you need to give it to them anyway. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you want to see them be the best that they can be. And the only way they can do that is by eating those vegetables. Amen. You got to introduce them to them. Anybody grew up not eating vegetables? I know there's a lot of people don't eat not a one. I know one personally don't eat nothing but corn. But (laughs) (laughs) yeah, I ain't going to call out. But vegetables are necessary. There's a, there's a certain blend that we have to have in our mm-hmm. bodies to have a balanced diet. And it's important for us to get those right blends. And when we get those right blends, then now our lives can be producing the right things. If you want your life to produce what's right, you got to introduce yourself to things that you don't necessarily want to do. If you don't want to, you, you know, I don't want to eat those uh, rutabagas, but my mama made me eat them. I didn't want to eat those uh, broccoli, but I had to eat it. Squash? Squash. Well, I don't know. My mama cooks some good squash. Squash and rice. I ain't like squash. So those things that we don't necessarily like, those things can be good for us. Yeah. And although you may not like to get up in the morning to pray, it's necessary for your life. Although you may not feel like trying to train your children and you're like, lead that up to the Sunday Sunday school teacher, the the children church, they'll teach them. No, that's our job. Yeah. As parents, we're supposed to be the teachers of our children. Okay. Say, say that one more time because I want the parents to understand that children's church is a supplement. Yes. Training starts in your house. Starts at home. Train up the child in the way they should go. And when they get old, they won't depart from it. And all the teachers in the back will do is reinforce what you have been training. Yeah, so we got to make sure we're putting our families in the right places so that they can grow and putting the right things in them so that they can grow. Let's look at Psalms uh, chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. It says, Blesses the man Mm -hmm. who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffer. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in season, and its leaves does not wither, In all that he does he prospers. Why is this tree prospering? Because it's planted by the rivers of water. Yeah. It's in the right places, getting the right things at the right times. Likewise with our families, we have to be in the right places, doing the right things at the right time with the right people so that God can th- flourish and grow us up. Although there are some things that we don't want to do or we don't want to commit to, we don't want to l- launch into, God's saying, plant yourself, plant your family. Put yourself in a place where your family can be the best that it can be. But if you're here and there and going one way, that way, this way, going that way, you're not planted or rooted. So you won't be able to sustain when the storms of life come, when the problems and tests come. All of those things will shift and shake you because you're not planted the way you need to be. Amen. Amen. So to have a flourishing family, go ahead and put it up. To have a flourishing family life. You have to be connected to the right blend of people and things. This is one of the great attributes about the gathering, Mm -hmm. Uh, the church. And I just want to talk about the church so you can understand Mm -hmm. who the church is. The church is not the building. The church is the body of believers that's here. 
we are the church. And literally, we want to let you know that in order to have a flourishing family, you have to be connected to the right blend of people. I believe we have the right blend of people in here. Yeah. We have people from all kind of walks of life that love Jesus. And when we bring our family members uh, to see other family members that love Jesus, there is something powerful that happens. And, and one of the great things that happen is that you'll start to see that you're not in this thing by yourself. Yeah. You'll see the other people that's trying to do right. You'll see other people that's trying to put their best foot forward. Yeah. You'll see other people that's trying to serve God and to train up their children and to raise their, their sons and daughters in the things of God. Yeah. So one of the ways that you can allow your families to flourish is to make sure you connect with the right group of people. Yeah. Can I suggest that Forward Christian Center is the right group of people? Yeah. We got some great people. We got some people that love God. We got some teens that's loving God. We got some children that's loving God and serving God, and they're trying to be their best in Jesus Christ. And if you want your family to be best, you got to make sure that your family is hanging around those that are the best as well. Amen. Put them in the right places with the right people doing the right things at the right times because it's important. When I remember um, growing up and the people that my uh, family or anybody, my mama didn't let us associate with just anybody because she understood that you can start picking up habits yeah. or picking up lifestyles of another person. It wasn't no stand tonight at anybody's house. Matter of fact, we didn't even say tonight anywhere. Mm. First thing she'll say is, why they can't come over here? Because I know what's going on in my house, but I don't know what's going on in their house. Ooh, come on, go cool. say that one more time. That's a revelation. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I, I know what's going on in my house, but I don't know what's going on in their house. So we have to be mindful with our children, not to allow them any in anybody's atmosphere. We are the protectors. We're the guarders yeah. of our children and our families. We can't allow them to be with anybody doing anything. I think this generation now, children kind of run the family. Uh, it's kind of out of order in some ways where the parents are running around doing everything the children want to do and not doing what the order of the household should be. Parents tired. Oh, I'm so tired. I don't get no rest. I'm like, you've been working? No, Jimmy got football. He got track. He got this. He got that. <laughs> and all of these activities. And then you just running around with the kids. But we have to bring back that order. Bring back that balance. Get our f children in the right places at the right th times, doing the right things with yeah. the right people. Yeah. That means putting them with the people of God, putting them around people who are going to uplift them, encourage them, putting them in environments of people who have their best interests at heart. If we're going to protect our children, we can't let them just go where they want to go. We can't let them be around anybody. That means our family. That means some of our friends, because you know your girlfriend that you hang out with, she's not a good example. So why would that be your primary go-to person for your children? We can't let those examples or those images be placed before our families, because if they see, oh, auntie, oh, that's the turn up auntie. Oh, come on, auntie, come through. Eh, eh, eh. They see her jamming, and they all dropping it like it's hot, and they all clapping and laughing like it's good the children will begin to put that image in their mind. Yeah, that's and real. And we can't that's have real. that in that's our real. families if we want our children to be productive. Uh, if we want our children to have good role models, we have to put them in front of good role models. That's good. Everybody that they hang around can't be of the world. Everybody can't be doing what they want to do, not if we want to raise godly children. You do got to put some barriers. You do have to present some form of uh, borders for your children if you want them to grow and thrive. Amen? Amen. Let's give God some praise. <laughs> Amen. So the vegetables is when you give a person something that they need more so than what they want. Yes. But the third part of the, of the family being on a ba balanced diet is they have to have some bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to have some bread. I found this, this out the hard way on my 21-day fast, prayer and consecration. We did the Daniel fast. Mm -hmm. And that was no meats for me, no sweets, and no bread. Mm -hmm. i say that one more time. No, no, meats. no meats, no sweets, no sweets and no bread. And no bread. All I was eating was 
those veggie tables. And one thing I, I, I've come to know about those veggie tables is that they run straight through you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as soon as you eat it, we was at the restaurant. We was at uh, Outback. We had to order uh, some su uh, soup, and we ordered some, uh, some salad as soon as I ate it. We talked a little bit for about an hour, and everybody was like, okay, it's time to go. I said, time to go? I'm hungry again. Because <laughs> those vegetables, they went straight through me. And I didn't have that bread to, to swell up. And y'all know when y'all eat them rolls and everything, that bread swell up on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. But all I had was those vegetables. Mm -hmm. And when I went to the toilet, <laughs> those vegetables straight ran straight through me. <laughs> because I was missing the bread. I was thinking my stuff was going to look a certain way, but it ain't look the way it needed to look. The bread of life. <laughs> because it was missing the bread of life. <laughs> but I want you to see this. If you have everything else, you read your word, you have some praise, you have some worship, but you miss the bread of heaven, which represents Jesus, you're missing everything. And I want you to see this because some people want God, but they don't want Jesus. You can come to church and you can have church and you can be churchy. And you can say that you love God, uh -huh. but if you don't love Jesus, yes. you're missing the bread of life. Yes. And none of it is worth nothing. Yes. Yes. Can, can, I, can I kick some truth? The same people that call on God is the same people that reject Jesus. Yes. And they think they're in the way. And they think they're serving God. Yeah, yeah. And can I go a step further to say the God of Islam is not the God that I serve. Amen. They call their God God. Mm. So do we. Mm. But what's the separating factor? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is Lord. Yeah. Let me go a step further. Jesus is God. So when I call on God, I call on Jesus. Yes. And when I call on Jesus, I call on God. Yes. But some people just call on God and they miss Jesus. Yes. But can I say you can't have a balanced diet if you miss Jesus? Yes. The bread of life, the bread of heaven. Yes. Gotta have Jesus. So to be balanced, you got to have the bread, the living bread. And his name is Christ Jesus. Yes. I need just a little more Jesus. John 6 35 says, Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. No one coming to me will ever be hungry again. Ooh. Those believing in me will never thirst again. Yeah. So that bread of Jesus, he going to swell up in you. Yeah. And you will never be hungry another day in your life. He'll give you just what you Ooh. need. He going to give you what you need. You're going to be so full. But you got to have that right ingredient. You got to have that bread. So we say you need the meat, you need the vegetables, and you need that bread. That meat, that's that strong word. You got to have that strong word. What is the vegetables? This is stuff you don't necessarily want, but you got to have. You got to have that praise. You got to have that worship. Yeah, you got to have that fellowship. Yeah, yeah. You got to have your life in the right places at the right time. And you definitely need this bread because it is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Because without that bread, your family will always be hungry. Oh, that's good. Y'all will be searching, looking, trying to figure out why my family can't stay together. Why we can't feel satisfied. Because you ain't got Jesus. In order to be satisfied, for your family to be full and flourishing in the things of God, you got to have Jesus. He's going to fill up those missing places. Yeah. He's going to. Yeah. Fill you up with him. 
And when we're full with Jesus, the world can't uh, penetrate what God is doing in us. Because ain't no room. Because we're full of Jesus. We got to have the bread of life. Jesus is that bread of life. We can't le lead our families without leading them with Jesus Christ. We can't have all the rest of that stuff saying, oh, you got to be a man. Look man in the eye. Do what men do. Walk up right. Walk up straight. But you ain't giving them Jesus. Come on. That's real. You can't tell your daughters how to be successful in business and how to thrive and be a lady. And you ain't telling them that they need Jesus. Come on. Come on. Because everything that I got come from Jesus yeah. himself. I ain't nothing without him. Everything that God has given to me. It's all everything that I have all comes from him. So all the stuff that doesn't matter. Jesus is the determining factor. He's the deciding factor. He is the one that's going to fill your life up so yes, full. Yes. You're going to be able to walk in peace. You're going to be able to walk in wholeness. You're going to be able to walk in joy. When things I around you and people on the job are going crazy, I you're need. the one that's still going to have the joy of the Lord because you're full of Jesus. Yes. And you got him on the inside of you. So we got to have Jesus. Amen. We got to have Jesus. 1 Corinthians 10 and 31 says this, and y'all can jump ahead, media team. 1 Corinthians 10 and 31. So whatever, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Just as my wife said, yeah, you got to have that meat. You got to have those vegetables you have got to have the bread yeah. there's some other things you got to have but we're not able to get to it but whatever you eat or drink you got to do it all yeah. for the glory of God what am I saying yeah when you give God praise you got to do it all for God's glory when you give God worship yeah. you got to do it all for God's glory yeah. When you come in and you serve in the house of the Lord and you teach your, your sons and your daughters and your, your family the things of God, you got to do it all for the glory of God. While you're on your job and you have your praise and worship music on, you got to be doing your work outside in the marketplace for the glory of God. While you're out there interacting with all kind of brothers and sisters and even the unbelievers, whatever you're doing, you got to do it all for the glory of God because when you do all things for the glory of God he'll get the glory out of your life and before you know it your son will be praying just like you've been praying before you know it your young daughter she'll be worshiping just like she see mama and daddy worship before you know it your wife she'll be following you, you to the house of the Lord and wherever you go, she'll go. And wherever she go, you'll go. Why? Because you'll have that harmony and you'll have that dynamic in your family relationship. Because you're now a healthy family. You're now a well-balanced, a well-nourished family. And because of that, now your whole family can do the things of God. And you can stand up and say, as for me and my house, woo! We're going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, I'm talking about everybody. When we go to worship service, everybody going. Ain't nobody staying home. Amen. When I'm going to serve the Lord, everybody going. Why? Because this is a family affair. Yep. Why is it a family affair? Because my family matters. Yeah. Yeah. My family matters. It's not what we put on our family that matters. It's what we put in our family. Give them God. Give them Jesus because we are spiritual beings that need a spiritual encounter. I don't know about you, but I need Jesus. Anybody need Jesus? Yeah, yes. Anybody need Jesus? Come on, let's stand up and give God some praise.